yeah, my name's Tom Hearn, I'm the project manager for this, uh, it's really called the Night Ridge Adventure Project, it's based at Livingston in West Lowland. But the, the kids or the young folk call it the Venny, so that's the adventure part, really shortened. It was, uh, it's owned by West Lothian Council, but it was shut down a number of years ago, and uh, through a community consultation based in 2008, local people demanded or suggested to the council, could we get it reopened again? So it's a voluntary organisation and we receive most of our, our core funding through the local authority, but we've been in for other pieces of work as well. Uh, okay. So basically it is a youth club. It's a youth drop-in service. And uh, what we say is, you know, it's much more than a kind of youth, a youth club or a youth drop-in. We say it encompasses participation, empowerment, collective action, and also partnership working. Um, so, although we work with Historic Scotland on our uh, the skate park, and there'll be a film later on about that, but uh, what we're saying is we have much more to offer as a youth club. And just some of the things that we've, through a blank canvas when we first opened in 2008, some of the things that you can achieve through young people, the community being on board, and uh, listening to what people say. So this was a, a derelict piece of land that uh, was, was in the area uh, where we work in Nightridge in Livingston, which is classed as a multi-deprivational multi area. Uh, Two streets in that are, are number one and number three in the social index of multiple deprivation for West Lothian. So we turned this derelict piece of land into this, which is the Venice Community Garden. So um, we got some money for the local authority and also through the Land Trust. and. Uh, we had a consultation prior to this to see what we could do with this piece of land. And uh, children, young people, the community suggested maybe we could get a community garden here. So um, some of the things that we've done, we've built some raised beds so that we could uh, get local people to come along and rent a bed. Uh, it's £10 to rent a bed, but it's basically they get their £10 back at the end of the year if they hand their key back. Uh, we've got planted areas, we've got a sensory garden, we've also got a couple of greenhouses that we can uh, grow our plants from. And uh, what we also do there, and uh, we, we have community events in there, so we have community barbecues, and that generally turns out about you know a couple of hundred folk uh, for your community. Uh, and also, uh, the last couple of years we've run a Santa's Grotto, and we've run a Winter Wonderland. And Santa comes to the Nightridge Venice Community Garden. Instead of people having to go away down to the Almondvale Centre, it's very kind of, you know, like you know, folk just tend not to want to leave their community. And uh, plus, it's a fiver to go and see Santa down at the <laughs> centre. And uh, we, we would just take a pound or two pounds. Everybody gets to see Santa and everybody gets a present. And everybody gets as much photos as you can. Uh, so, really, it's. It's owned, the, the, the garden's really owned by the community. It's, uh, we also work with community groups, special needs groups, uh, some of the local schools and stuff like that, and individuals who can rent a bed. And uh, that's some of the other things that we've done in the garden. We've done arts in the garden, mosaics, we do a bit of storytelling, crop harvesting. So we would encourage young people to plant things and uh, grow them, harvest them, take them up to the Venny building, prepare them and make a pot of soup there. So right through, nothing right through. Uh, and we're also voted the West Lothian Garden of the Year in 2016. So, and it's only, you know, we only started in 2015 with this. Uh, so. There we go, first prize. <laughs> so one of the other things that we've uh, created in the last couple of years as well as a bike project and uh, that was us on the launch day we had uh, we showed bikes for some of the places that we got our bikes here some of the pictures um, so 
uh, the top left, that was us launching the project and saying that these are the things. That, 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 that bike there is a BMX bike that was, uh, it was in the dump, the council dump. So we've saved it for going to the landfill and uh, we've brought it to the venue. We've done it up, albeit we've spent a wee bit of money doing it up, but it just shows that people, you know, that this is what you could do with these old bikes. So we started off uh, with, with no bikes. We've got four bikes donated to us for the local authority and uh, we now have 60 bikes. So we call it a bike lending library. So people can come and lend a bike for us for free whether it be a BMX, whether it be a ladies' bike, a racing bike, or a mountain bike. And, uh, you know, it just depends uh, the circumstances. We generally would lend them on a day that we have a club running, and, uh, and we encourage people for the community uh, to, to lend a bike. This, the bottom left here is a wee boy. He was, uh, I think he's a Polish boy, and he got his bike stolen for the community. So we made up a bike for him and uh, gave him it for free. So... And uh, this on the bottom, the bottom right, <clears throat> the bottom right here is uh, that was we do cycle led rides, so we encourage people to come along with our cycle led rides. We've got two or three members of staff who are trained in that, but you know it's just getting people to come together, a short risk assessed ride, maybe you know mile, two mile, three mile, something like that. Sometimes they'll be a bit longer, but it's just encouraging people to be part of this group. Uh, We've in, we encourage volunteers to come along and upskill them by putting them on a training course, but even just giving them kind of like in-house training uh, to, just to fix fix some of the bikes. A lot of the bikes that come to us are, you know, they're just needing a puncture repair or a new tyre or a brake adjusted and stuff like that. So uh, that's some of the other things. Uh, the community is very much on board and they kind of, uh, they, they, they donate quite a lot of bikes to us, albeit, you know, some of it's, you can't really use it, to be honest, but we never say no to anybody. You know, we we'll always take the bike and even, you know, forget a couple of parts of it and then uh, can you pass it on. We also give donations of bikes to other uh, projects through West Lothian. Uh, occasionally we run bike maintenance workshops, so like an open day, somebody could come up and get their bike fixed. We'll do that for nothing. But no extensive repairs, you know, if it was, we would have to charge a wee bit for that. Um, Lead cycle rides. So, reuse, recycle. We've examined our carbon footprint and uh, we've prevented 60 bikes probably from reaching landfill. And uh, we're in the process of creating like a social enterprise. So, maybe if we get some bikes and we do them up, we could, um, you know, perhaps sell them at a low cost to some people, which we've done. And every, every, every penny gets reinvested into the bike project. These are just some of the other activities that we do. Uh, so we have a, this is the top left, that's, you know, we have a girls club. Uh, the bottom left is, that's some local volunteers who we do in-house training. So we would train them to become youth workers. And uh, it's like a six week course that we run. And, um, and this is the weekend residential that we spent doing at East Lothian. We've got, a, uh, this is the very under 21 football team who play, play in the Edinburgh League. And that's our boys club. This is a group of volunteers who were taken down the day to Portobello Beach. And so we're open six nights a week, and uh, that's our, fa our face Facebook page, our Twitter, our, uh, our website. Um, all the board and staff and volunteers are all local people. Everybody comes from that area, and uh, all board members and stuff as well. Um, and when we take on these group of volunteers, we say it's about capacity building and community development for them so that they could play a bigger part in community affairs. And whether it be that we put them on a training course or whether it be first aid or learn them to drive the minibus or something like that, you know, they can then go on to, to, to further things. Um, some of the other stuff that we do at the project, sexual health, drug and alcohol advice. And uh, we're on a holiday programme. So every time there's a school holiday, we'll run a club through the day, every day. And uh, I don't know if people are aware, <clears throat> certainly this local authority, 60% of the kids that go to local primary school get free school meals. And when the schools close, there is no school meals to replace that. So for the past eight years, we've run a, a holiday club every single day uh, during the school holidays. 
so everybody gets something to eat or something to drink. And we we don't take we didn't take any we didn't charge anything for that. So it's free. Every club that we run at the venue on the six days or six nights, whenever it is, is free. And everybody gets something to eat and everybody gets something to drink. And how we can fund that is we've got a uh, we've got a partnership with the Edinburgh Cyrenians Fair Share Food Scheme. Yeah. Uh, we have a choir as well, and we can go to older people's homes and stuff like that. Kids, uh, young folk get taken out of school and taken along with that. There's our football team, uh, we do health walks, exchanges. Um, some of the recent work, we've got a youth political, like a youth issues group. Uh, we do our employment stuff and we become a social enterprise. So, what we are really here to talk about is our skater group. Okay, so just a wee bit of the historical part about Livingston. It's quite famous for its skating and skateboards. And know the part that we've got, but the, the, the actual bowl that exists, and that's a picture of it for the 70s. And uh, it's voted in the top 25 in the world as a skate park. Uh, so that's where we've taken the lead for that. We've got a lot of young people, uh, our skater group, come together. They've, des they've designed this. This, this, this is our park, this is our Veni park, it's got a particular V right in the middle of it for the Veni. Young people design that, work with the, with the Play Park Association, come around to check it every day. Uh, this is the park in motion, that was the very first day it was opened. And uh, some of the skaters, this is the same here, you know, they, they're quite an informed and articulate group, and albeit, you know, they've, with their you know, skateboard pants and their hats on back to front and stuff like that, you know, people sometimes might get a wee bit intimidated with a group, but what a fantastic group they were to work with. And uh, it was them every day, you know, kind of drove the process through to get the skate park and uh, they were consulted in all aspects. And so once we cut the skate park pulp, we then done the PC work with Historic Scotland, Scotland's Urban Pass, to tell the story of the skate park, the processes that was involved and how they got their skate park. And uh, so that's the story was told in a wider kind of front. I mean, we could have maybe made a film about it, but knowing the same professional manner that was kind of done. So, um, and this is, that was the kind of launch it. So that is the end of that. Let's try to watch the film because I think the young people say it's so much better than you could actually exactly. say. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, your presentation was brilliant, <laughs> of course, uh, but <laughs> I didn't want to say thank you there's, so much. There's, there's, there's something in there somewhere. <laughs> And there's also this amazing groovy music. <laughs> what people call it, the very for short, that's short for the bridge, so it's called the very. It's based in the bridge.
hugely, hugely pleased and surprised about the review for the day. So I said my third time was funded to get a skate to get a skate park built at the end. We were amazed. We were happy that we got all that money. So every single day after school then came round to as the as the park was being the skate park was being constructed. So the day after the day start, they absolutely crash. Skate music like only like Texas like skate because it's a it's a way of actually express myself. And it's just amazing. Just be able to learn yourself. If I wasn't skating, then I'd be out with most people my age doing stuff that I'm not supposed to do, hanging about the streets and kind of trying to pause. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, thank you.